All right. We are recording on all the fronts. Oh. Ken, were you doing the thing with, like, the makeup bloggers, how they, like, put their hand behind the stuff so they keep yeah. focused? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Did you, see the, did you see the symbol on the glass right there? Did you see that? Put your, put your hand in it. Right. Oh, yeah. Put I love this glass. We were at a, a, a beer event, and uh, and it was all, like, catered and paid for, so you just got up and got beers. And, like, and glasses. <laughs> and I and I acquired this glass the first time I've ever acquired a glass. Today we are drinking Six Point Resin. So I really like resins, uh, Six Points marketing. I have a suggestion. Yes. Why don't you put them under the camera so we're not looking sideways? Because, no, 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 no. Because then you're going to block this. Put them, put them, That's where he puts put them way back there. Space. So when he puts stuff in front of Jackie, it'll just be like. <laughs> I've had resin a couple times. It's one of my favorite IPAs. The color is great. The flavor is great. But I really like Six Points um, marketing. They're very, very brand consistent with all their stuffs. They have these like. Uh, Cans that they probably get from Red Bull. Right, the Red Bull cans? Yes. Yeah, see Jackie, me and you know how to pour beer. Two fingers. Two fingers. Okay, so I guess we should I guess we should preface this. We have Ken and Jackie on We have Ken and Jackie on via Skype in Austin, Texas. I will preface this by saying that I I'm not a fan of IPAs, um, so I'll do my best to not have a bitter beer face, but no promises. So I don't I, get any real floral pops in it. You can smell the one that's got a head. Yeah. It's a little bit malty, okay. right? Because I mean, look, look at the color. So it definitely has some malty characters to it, characteristics to it, because of the just how malty it is. You wouldn't get that that dark of a orange without there being a good malt characteristic to it. All right, let's take a sip. So there's definitely there's definitely hops present, but it's not like rip your face off. No. It's actually a very nice almost like a caramel flavor to it. It does have a little caramel. A Everything from Six Point has a, I've noticed this with the higher quality beers, they have like an organized flavor. Does that make sense? Like there's not, like you don't have flavors like shooting off in different directions. Everything kind of gels well together and goes in a general direction. I mean, if I had to drink an IPA. On camera, I guess I'd drink this one. <laughs> well, no. This is a 9.1% alcohol by volume? Yeah. What is the, That's the um, other thing. So it's not not 9.1% alcohol. This is dangerous. I love the way they put the, the IBUs on the can, the alcohol, like all in a nice little... Yes, very like, nice. Little yeah. This is what Ken is talking about. Very nice, collected, very, very, very well done marketing. Beer is culture. It says on all their beer, it says beer is culture, which I agree with. Um, so it's 9.1% ABV and it's 103 IBUs. It does not, it, the 103 was very scary to me, um, but I'm not mad at it. And I think, and I've, a couple beers I've done that have been higher IBUs that have the same color and, this, and a higher malt um, content, it really mellows out the IBUs. Have you had anything else from Six Point? This is the first six points beer that I've ever had. I as well. And I think this is one of their. This is probably my favorite beer of theirs that I've that I've had. I've had three or four now, and I would say this is this is my favorite. Um, I reviewed High Res not too long ago. Um, I just reviewed Bengali, which is all which is in I think an eighty IBU that is twice as bitter as this. Really? Yeah. So do you get any floral off of this? I don't. I get more of none. So I have noticed this this certain, and I wonder if it's the same chemical, 
but there's a certain pithiness to the to the bitterness. Like, if you ever have like grapefruit pith, the white part around the grapefruit. Oh, I see what you're saying. I kind of get that a little bit. It's like a citrusy pith. So, like, like any 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 citrus, any citrus, the white part of the of the peel, like un, under the color, is the pith, and there's That's a certain a good analogy. Right? Because like it's the back sides of my tongue that like feel the bitterness in this beer. And I don't get that. It's the sides of my tongue. You don't get that? No, not towards that. It's along the sides. Yeah, they're like. So I've only I the other time the other I I have this beer many times and every time I've had it I've had it on draft and I think. I, a couple beers now that I've had on draft and then had in the can or can or bottle, and draft usually presents itself better. I agree. There's so many variables in a draft beer, right? So like. Yeah, how clean you, the lines are, how cold the mix. Something you have full control of the amount of oxygen that goes in there. Typically, they purge with the nitrogen oxygen out with, with CO2 first, then they fill the beer, and then they can it. <coughs> No light penetration happens, right? Like, it's a perfect, like, a way to transport beer. When you go to uh, a keg, if it's your, like, if breweries have it on tap at their own place, they don't mind wasting beer. They'll just clean the lines every week, right? Uh, if, if you're a bar and... Uh, as soon as it tastes good coming out, you're, 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 that's it. That's as much as you're going to purge. You don't want to waste any beer, right? So... Like, a lot of times, you'll just put on the same keg on the same tap and not clean the line between. So it might be you've got that that keg of Bud Light on there for, like, a year. No one ever cleans the lines. Oh, that's gross. Um, and that, is it, it, does that lead to hangovers? Yeah, but I don't drink Bud Light, so who knows? So... The dog um, just walked in the room. She busted the door open. You, you <laughs> not only have the line, right, but you also have the actual type of tap that they're using. So a lot of breweries bring their own taps and say, we're going to, you know, we're going to use this style of tap because it leads to less uh, infections or it, it's easier to clean. Really? Or is what is that a thing? Yeah. It's a huge thing. Yeah. Like different stuff. You spends a lot of money on just not, the, not the tap handle, but the actual faucet itself. And so some of them have the little, uh, when you pull it back, it pushes the pin forward. Right. Right. That part gets gummed up with, with beer if it, you know, sits overnight or whatever, if they don't clean it, you know, before they go home or whatever. And so that can grow bacteria. And so your faucet, you know, that doesn't, in, you know, in a bar is not exactly the cleanest place in the world, right? Uh, so. And that starts <laughs> to influence the flavor? Yeah, so you can get uh, something that's on draft that tastes completely different than something on can because typically the can is what the brewery wants you to have uh, versus on draft. But the draft might taste different, might be better in your opinion, or might be worse in your opinion. It it, it just depends on how much cleaning. So a lot of the the distribution that goes on in in brewing, right, like you sell your distribution rights to the the middleman, right, The, the distributor has people that go out and clean well i mean there's no way to really like quality cq it right so like every time you go to your qc, QC. Is, is that why mike like drinks beers of his own everywhere he goes to make sure it's... every time mike goes to a, a bar and he has his own beer on tap he's sampling it yeah and if it ain't right if something's wrong he'll just finish his beer and he'll pull out his phone and he'll send out a text message and the so next day, they, the, they come out. And, the drivers. Yeah. yeah. So with a big, giant corporation, you don't have that much control. You, you hit it on the spot, right? Like Austin Beer Works, they, they self-distribute. So they have a lot of control over how their beer tastes in the marketplace. But once you release it, like, you know, this goes, this goes around the world, right? It, this is the best way to do that. So, so I, I heard that – I heard this year's release of um, – Funky Buddha's Last Snow is totally, like, people are, like, done with Funky Buddha because they messed up the release that bad. Good. So this is uh, this is pretty cool. A beer from what? How many miles is it? It's 19 hours. 1,800 miles. So you go 90 miles an hour for 18 hours?
Not that far. It's probably, what, 1,300? I'll look it up. I go the long run. <laughs> via Abita? Via Abita? Yeah. I've never been. It's good. We should meet in Abita. Oh, you drive yeah. up from Florida. We could do that. And I will drive from Texas to Abita. I will come with one eye. <laughs> how, how many, how far is that from you? It's about halfway? Do you smell yeah. anything on this beer? No, like it, it's... There's a, no smell to this no, beer. No, no, no. There's a tiny bit of pop. Like smelling it, I no. know it's an IPA. No. You also have no nose, so... Hey, do a beer review. It, it smells a little bit like... It smells a little bit like you left orange, like the last sip of orange juice in a glass for like half a day. Is this supposed to be citrusy? No, I don't Six think so. Six and a half hours for us to get to Abita. What? How Six many? Six and a half hours. Uh, from them to there. Well, listen. So uh, it's definitely more. If it's only six and a half for you, it's definitely more for us. It is. To 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 synopsize. No. <laughs> Not <quite that> person. <laughs> <laughs> the beer has no smell. Distinguishable. I smell. For an IPA, because you have. For an IPA, I'll give you. Floral hops, and you have bittering hops. This went all bittering hops, but as your point is, it has more of a malt flavor to it, right? And a crystal kind of, you know, amber. Very, it, yeah, it's, it's very. It's, it's, it's well filtered. It is. Um, so, I like the beer. I think that your 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 side tongue doesn't like the beer because I get that flavor and and I think you 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 called it out with the pip uh, rind of an orange. I don't know why you're eating orange rinds, but like it feels like orange rinds. So I'm obviously I'm obviously not alone here with the eating of the orange rinds. You've obviously also eaten orange rinds because you knew what I was talking orange about. Orange rinds out of your backyard. Yes. Dude, remember that orange tree? We used to have a ton of oranges on that tree. Yeah. Good trick. Mowing the lawn, eating orange. Yeah. I'm done. You guys done? It's a terrible, terrible beer review, by the way, because we didn't talk about the beer. We just... Banter's part of it. No, I yeah. think we did. I think we did. It fits perfect in there, doesn't it? Like, I have the same, almost the same shape class. <laughs> My beer got stolen and then drank. Got stole. I mean, I'm kind of disappointed on the lack of lacing. Uh, well, I have a decent amount of lacing in mine. No. How'd you wash your glass? So I've noticed that hoppier beers have more lacing. Well, so we had a, we went to a bar the other day. It wasn't a bar, it was a brewery. And every beer had amazing, lacing. amazing lacing. And it, we all had different beers. Was there lactose in all the, the beers? And so it was like. Where were we? Bunch of dirty glasses. That's what you guys had. Yeah. <laughs> Who were we with? Dirty glasses. <laughs> that was awesome. We were with Luis and Laura. We were at our Whole Foods. <laughs> so Madison and I went and had dinner. You know the prepared food. You just pick your plate and you pay by the pound, whatever. And then I had a Bell's Two-Hearted Tall Boy at the Whole Foods for like two and a quarter. Dude, it was like, yes. How do you say no to that? I went back and got another one. So, three. I love <laughs> As many as. We, we love going to Whole Foods. <laughs> we, we grab. <laughs> no. <laughs> we grab beer and cheese and bread and we just sit. And Does your Whole Foods have out. a bar? They have a place you can eat. There's oh, no well, there's there's two Whole Foods. There's one in, in Winter Park, and there's one closer to Wasp. The one closer to Wasp does have a bar. Great place to go. And they yeah. were doing you six... Don't get anything in the store and sit down at the bar and eat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, yeah, I agree. And they usually have pretty decent yeah. stuff on draft. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, local pack takeover and stuff. Yeah. They were doing... Um, like six dollar burger and a beers. So I called them up and I said, "Hey, are you guys doing any non meat burgers?" But they weren't, because they sell quite. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> but if you would have gone and gotten a meatless burger and asked them 
to cook it, they probably would have. There in 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 our Whole Foods, there's a bar and like a little guy in a grill. And why so why has he got to be little? Two, and he'll make it. It's yeah, awkward, but works. The kebabs are really good during the summertime. Beer, beer good. Beer good. Wood beer, so well. wood beer again. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.